is Allison and Jason, and this is our week one of our four-week summer series. And each week we're going to go through a chapter in the book of Philippians, and during each week we're going to have a secret phrase that pays. So if you pay attention during the video and you see it pop up on the screen or you hear either of us say it, and you come to the program tonight and let Jeff, Jason, or me know what the phrase is, then you will get an awesome prize. So pay attention and here we go. So I have been checking out social media a little bit, looking at different uh, apps and looking at what people hashtag when they say, live your best life. It's a phrase like when I'm doing this, when I'm going skydiving, or I just got a new car, or I just got a dog, or I had this dog, and now I'm living my best life. So I'm gonna hashtag it. And I was thinking, well, if you just went through social media, and figured out like, oh, this is what it means to have a great life, a best life. Like, what would you actually be doing? So I just searched hashtag best life. And so I found this, I love this classic baby fist pump meme to live your best life. And so let's look at what people said. Oh, this is my best life. And so first of all, I found this dude who is totally decked out at the CrossFit gym. This is probably something that interests Allison over here. He's got the matching sneakers, shorts, and shirt. He's taking a selfie look at me I'm living my best life because I'm in the gym pumping weights but another guy would say oh it's not about getting pumped it's about getting rich look at this oh, big man. old table full of hundred dollar bills that he has he actually yeah. just won like a national a poker tournament so like if you had all this money like is that what it means to live a best life is to just get rich with cash hmm. now students may feel like most of the guys are gonna feel like this oh living your right best here. life is being really good at Fortnite or whatever video game you happen to like like if you can win Fortnite and you're always getting the prizes and the llamas that's you guys that is living your best life but to be better than anybody else at Fortnite have a twitch channel that everybody loves to follow because you're good mm -hmm. at video games that is living the best life right. now what I found really surprising, Allison, is so many people said my best life has something to do with animals. Yeah. Like different types of animals. If I'm doing this, best life. Check out this guy. He is having a good time. He caught a really big fish. Now that's my husband's best life. On the boat, he caught a really big slimy fish. Right. And that big fish in his nasty slimy hands yeah means he's living his best life. Like, that is not my best life. But some people, the slimy fish. Other people, it's not a slimy wet fish. It's a slimy wet cat. I don't know why. This is actually kind of an adorable looking no, meme. But we have this wet cat. And, oh, I'm a cat owner. I love to have cats. When I'm with my cats, I am hashtag living my best life. Right. Uh, I like cats, but I don't love cats, but I don't hate them. Right. But I wouldn't think it's my best light to have a wet cat in my house. But this I thought was the ultimate animal lover. It wasn't a dog. It wasn't a cat. No. It was an entire pack of llamas. He is living a llama life. He's got a bunch of llamas. He's holding a baby llama. If you're holding a baby llama, you are hashtag living your best no. life. And so people have all kinds of different ideas what a best life means. But I'm like, what does God have to say? Like, does God have an idea? of what a great life would look like? Like, what does God think about our best life? Right, so your idea of what your best life is, like this llama guy, and God's idea of your best life may look different. It may look crazy different. It may be similar, but it could look different. Now, Paul wrote to these people in a city called Philippi, so they were the Philippians, and he had taught about Jesus, and then he had left, and he was writing a letter back to give them some more teachings about God. And he says, you know what? God's already begun to work in your life, but he is going to grow you into God's best life for you. And he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, God, who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he's saying God began to guide you into your best life, but he's not done. He's going to keep growing you all the way until we see Jesus in heaven right. someday. So our first point is God has already started working in your life. What would be some examples of like how God is already working in our life? Because life's kind of average right now. Right. And sometimes you may not feel it, but he's already started working in your life. And you can think about coming to Rooted, coming to the program. Mm -hmm. That's a way that God can talk to you or your mentors yeah. are an amazing example of how God can work um, and talk to you and is working in your life. Um, you could think about your schools, how you can learn different traits and skills. Um, God is working in your life in so 
many different ways. So if God has begun to work in your life through your teachers helping you to be prepared for the future, through your mentor, right. maybe through your parents or guardians, like he's actually teaching you stuff. Mm -hmm. So what we would say to you is keep growing. Say yes, let him right. keep working in your life because God's gonna show you some stuff through your mentor. He's gonna say, you know, those music videos and those YouTube videos, they're not really helping you. Right. They're gonna give you the wrong message about body image or your sexuality and stuff. So how about we get away from that? Well, that is something that God's trying to guide you into a hashtag better life. And you maybe have to say no to that or to say yes to helping around the house more, being kind to your neighbors, being kind to your cousins or younger brothers and sisters. Like there are some real practical ways that God is guiding you to a better life. You gotta let him just keep working. Let him teach you, let him guide you because sometimes it isn't always glamorous or fun like a pack of llamas. Right. So some of the times our best life is things about becoming a better person. And not in your own strength, but letting God grow you and teach you. Let God keep working your life because through your mentor and through other people, he's already being to show you how he wants you to grow up well. Right. So our second point is to let God um, work in your life. But that's often, like in real life, that's hard. And we often resist him or ignore him. I know that many times in my life that God has been leading me, you know, to say yes to this way. And I said no because I, I was afraid or I was nervous or I just liked doing what I was doing and didn't mm -hmm. want to listen to him. So it's super simple saying yes when God leads you in that direction. So our main point is God wants you to live your best life. This is what we were talking about in the beginning of the video. And who knows better than God who created you, who knows every hair on your head, who knows everything about you and who loves you. Um, wouldn't you think that's somebody who would know what your best life is? So our point three is God's plan for your best life may look different than you think. So just be open to that. Yeah, because we think God's best life is having lots of friends all the time or having the latest electronics or being popular. Yeah, or having a really nice car, or really nice clothes, a video game system or a really big TV. Right. But what God has for our best life, like he wants to grow you into that, but it might be different than what you think because it isn't always going to be on people's social media because right. Paul wrote, hey, God is coaching you. He's begun a good work in you. He's going to keep working in you as long as you say yes all the way till we see Jesus in heaven someday. But Paul went through some really hard stuff, even though he was following Jesus. There were times he was thrown in jail. He was shipwrecked in the Mediterranean Sea, didn't know if he was gonna live. He got bit by a snake. There were by snakes. At times he didn't have enough food in his belly. At times the people he taught about God rejected him and blew him off and he was ignored. And there were times he'd go into a city right. and he'd talk about God. And he would talk about Jesus because he just wanted to help the people in the city but they didn't like it because they followed Roman gods right. like Saturn or Jupiter or Mercury. And some of the uh, people of the other religion got together a whole mob of people and they all beat Paul Jason. up. Paul got swooped. Paul got swooped by like a whole mob of people Paul like in the city of Ephesus. Got Paul got swooped. And that actually is our secret phrase for this week. Okay. Paul got swooped. Right. You come up to Jeff or Allison or myself and you say, Paul got swooped. Yeah. We will give you a prize that no one else gets because yeah. you paid attention to the secret phase. But think about it. Paul is living his best life. He's following God as best right. he can. And at times he just got swooped. It's and at times he got thrown in jail. Like God's plan for your best life might be different than what you think or even feels fun some of the time. Like for me, when I was in middle school, I had this one game that I loved to play, this video game I loved to play, but it had a lot of negative stuff in it. And God began to tug at my heart that I needed to get rid of it. And I liked it, but God was like, you need to back away from this particular game. And that was hard, but God was taking me to a better life. Or God was showing me instead of arguing with my parents over getting my chores done, like mowing the grass, right. if I did it ahead of time, there was no argument. That was part of me growing up well, was I did my chores, I started doing my chores ahead of time, and I had a lot less conflict with my mom and my dad. So that's part of growing up into a best life. So I would love for you guys to talk about what has God taught you or what is God teaching you about growing into a better life? Because God has a hashtag best life for you. So mentors, share an example. Maybe when you were a teenager or maybe recently where God has been trying to teach you something. I want you to start something, stop something or do something different right. to get into God's better plan for you as you're growing up. 
And then mentees, I would love if you can think of an example of maybe a way that God is trying to grow you into a better life. He's trying to grow you more to be like Jesus. Maybe to stop something or start something, to help out around the house, to be folding laundry for your parent or guardian without being asked. Maybe helping with younger cousins or brothers or sisters. Maybe it's being a kind friend in the neighborhood or helping an elderly person in your neighborhood. Helping somebody who's getting bullied. Yeah, like how are some ways that God is trying to show you how to live a better life? So both of you talk about that. Mentees give an example of what's happening right now, and mentors share an example of how God grew you up, mm -hmm. even as a teenager or maybe now. Talk about that, how God is growing you into a best life, mm -hmm. step by step, one piece at a time, and we look forward to hanging out with you guys tonight at our activity. See you then. See you later. See you later. What's your best life?